record. All right, I don't think it's going to be super long this week because I, I have hardly played anything because I've had a really busy week with work as well. Um, it's just that time of year, I think, as well with the summer and, you know, I've been busy all weekend. I haven't been at home at all. So crazy busy times, mate. I think for all of us, which I think a, a mm. couple of week break after this week's episode will do us a world of good. Hmm. <laughs> I'll actually have something interesting to talk about next week, though, possibly. You never know, right? (laughs) Just maybe we will. Okay, are you guys both ready to rock and roll? Mm Mm-hmm. Time order as usual is fine. Good times, mate. Good times. Uh, It's like episode 134 now. Episode 134. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, are you ready? Mm-hmm. You, re- you ready, Nick? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And a three, and a two, and a one. Hello, and welcome to 360 GamerCast, episode 134, for Tuesday, the 23rd of August, 2022. I'm your host, Mark Webb, Gamertag, Pierce ID, Steam ID, Webby 360 g and joining me on this very fine evening is... I'm not typing up my podcast notes right now, Nick Fights. Notes. Uh, it's I always make notes. I forget. I can't remember <laughs> things. How do you expect me Same to remember here. things? I, 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 I have notes on a Google sheet that I've been using for over 10 years. I just change it every week. I did share it with the rest of the podcast <laughs> crew, but no one else seems to want to use That's it apart from me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you, the, the only person who does use it is actually Sly. So when I'm yeah, Sly on last week, he um, was, was editing the sheet. So... So that was good because I actually knew what he was meant to what he what he was going to talk about and it was actually quite helpful. So, yeah, oh, that that was quite good. Anyway, if you're watching live on Twitch, you might notice my face is a little bit red. I have been outside all day today at Santa Pod Raceway watching monster trucks squash cars and caravans and things, and I got a little bit sunburn. Nice. Yeah, so yeah, that's why I'm a little bit red. It'll be gone t- tomorrow. I'll go a bit brown, but it just happens when when uh, my pasty skin is in the sunlight all day long. So that's the reason for that. It was actually it's been quite, pretty quite cloudy down this this part of the country. Uh, well, it was, well, the sun was out a lot, but even like you know through the clouds, the sun was beaming through the clouds and stuff. You know what I mean? You're still gonna get a little bit burnt and stuff. So, um, but yeah, my little boy enjoyed the monster trucks, so that was good. And we watched the uh, drag racing as well on the other side of the track, so that was cool. So, so it was a really good day today. I'm just absolutely knackered now. Got home and I was just like, oh, I actually uh, had a little nap before the podcast. I just laid in bed, just leave me alone, just for about 45 minutes just to try and get some energy. So here I am again now. So all is good. But yeah, I've been busy all this weekend. I haven't done any gaming all weekend at all. I um, was in London yesterday at Kew Gardens all day. Didn't get home till really late. I uh, got home about half past nine at night. And then um, my wife's nephew wanted to watch the boxing. So we watched the boxing last night as well. And that didn't finish till... Oh, must have been around half twelve, I think. Around that time. So... Yeah, a bit, a bit of a late night and up early today, so it's been a bit of a hectic weekend, to be honest. So, and and then my whole week, because work's just been kicking my balls, as I think it has for you two as well. Um, I haven't really done a hell of a lot of gaming anyway, so I've done a little, but not what I've wanted to do. Um, I've not had my final fantasy 14 time this week really at all which has been a little bit annoying because i was working my way at getting the uh of doing me dailies just just to get my currency to get my better gear but um alas i've not been able to do that this week so uh that's been a what little was bit the bonus the, the the new content drops on tuesday the new patch oh no i saw that's good bring with it brand new tone gear as well Oh, which means you will probably find there'll be new times to get the the um well they usually lower the price of um 
the previous Time Gear stuff and oh, obviously right. knock it down the time tier. Oh, uh, okay. So you, you might find you were able to buy a couple of pieces of that anyway and obviously work on some new stuff. But yeah, yeah the new story drops, new raid drops, the weird kind of Pokemon Island thing, the Getaway oh, Sanctuary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you sort nice. of take your uh, minions and go and sort of do farming and stuff. It's con- going to be weird to see how that actually works. Yeah, no, sounds good. No, I'm looking forward to that. So um, I'll try and get into that a little bit next week if I can. Obviously, F1 Manager 2022 is out next week. Uh, and I've also got... I've got a lot of work I need to do, though. So, I'd, I mean, the main reason for taking this few weeks off podcasting for me personally is that I've got a lot of um I've got a lot of personal work to do. Um so there's not going to be a lot of time for gaming anyway. So um I need yeah, to crack on with that. So yeah, I'm not really going to be gaming much and I'm, I'm going to be just quite quite busy. So I'll just try not to have many distractions if that makes sense. So yeah. But uh yeah, I mean I'm guessing we'll just kick it off then. I mean, I can. I mean, I've been ch- chatting away for a while, so um, uh, we'll we'll get to Nick now. Then um, Nick, give us something that you've been playing for the last week. Yeah, I've been playing this quite a bit since la- not yesterday, but last Saturday, and quite a lot at night time and some other streamers chats because I saw it and it had a uh, Resident Evil characters on sale. So I'm like, oh. Must buy this because I've never played it. That's Dead by Daylight. Oh yeah. Oh, I thought he was going to say Fortnite because there's a couple of Resident Evil characters in Fortnite as well. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, but that's why I started playing Fortnite. Fortnite might come back later, but oh my no, goodness, I <laughs> you love it. You're in there. Oh, I know why the Fortnite will come back later points. if it's PFP. Yeah, you know what it is, don't you? But yeah, I was playing this because, like I said, I think that. That was on offer. I think it was like twelve quid or something like that. And then I found out it was on Game Pass anyway. So I was like, Oops. "Oh, that's hilarious!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this was like with the Resident Evil characters. So I was like, "Ah, screw yeah. it." But yeah, oh, okay. I was playing with um, another Twitch streamer I've known pretty much ever since I've been streaming. Um, Lady Reaper, another British girl, and um, yes, we were playing like in my chat with loads of people and stuff like that last week for about three or four hours and then every, like pretty much another two three nights until about 10 11 o'clock at night every night nice. basically getting shouted at because i'm not doing it properly oh okay because, yeah because i mean i don't really know what i was supposed to do i was like i don't read instructions i you know i played games all my life you know i don't read instructions i was like i haven't got a clue what i'm supposed to do but i don't know have you two played it though no i know no, it's quite old now it. It's quite old now, isn't it? It's about five years old, isn't it? It keeps yeah, getting think... content drops, even mm. now. Yeah, I think it was in like beta for a few years, and then went and come out. I say twenty eighteen officially, but I think it was twenty sixteen when they first brought it out, like the beta version. So, so yeah, yeah it's good. it has to be. It has to be the the most popular version of that game type. Because well, like what, what is it? You got to survive or something? And, is it, is well, it it's, is... the, it's like Friday the 13th and like the Evil Dead kind of game that came out recently. They're all very similar, aren't they? Like one person plays as the sort of villain and you've got to go out and kill the people playing as the survivors. Right. Yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's simple, but it's quite hard because they keep changing. I mean, it is actually a very hard game. You've got to be good at it. I suppose there's a lot of good people. Basically, you, we were playing as four survivors, you know, the people. And the whole idea is you land in a map, you know, somewhere, and there's quite a few maps. There's even a Resident Evil, you know, RPD, the um, oh, police nice. station as well. Yeah. And outside. Oh, I, yeah, I, no one likes that one, apparently. But I like oh, it because right. I know my way around. So that's great. I know where it all is. But, it's. I mean, it's very simple. Basically, you've got... um generators around the um map you have to like fire these generators up i think there's seven but you have to fire up five to get them working then open a door and then you go over to the door you know to turn the power on to the door and then you open the door and then you escape right okay and then it's up to the bad guy who's also 
And so you could play as a survivor or as the villain. And there's loads of them. You know, there's like um, uh, Michael Myers, there's um, or Freddy Krueger, loads of stuff like that. There's even got Nemesis, who obviously I played as. But they're all slightly different, you know, skills. Some are faster, but don't hit as hard. Some are hit really hard, but are really slow, things like that. I mean, generally, the monsters are faster than people. But, I mean, it's actually quite difficult to get the um, generators to go. Or at least I thought it was, because maybe my reaction times aren't great. Basically, you have to hold, like, one of the bumper buttons. Yeah. And then she's, like, repairing it or whatever, pulling wires out. And then all of a sudden, you know, like, a quick time event comes up. Like, you know, like, a spinny wheel. And the mm -hmm. only problem is yeah. sometimes, and I'm, I'm going to blame the game because it's not me, sometimes where it starts, I just think you couldn't press that button quick enough. See what I mean? Because it spins around in a circle and you've got to stop it in the middle of where it wants you to stop it. Or basically the generator explodes because you've done it wrong. Then if it explodes, it then shows up on the map for the monster, so then he knows where you are. Then he can uh, come for you. Okay. So, so yeah, how many players basically... online is this then? Five. That you can have four survivors and uh, and one of the killers. But then you right. could play five, then take it in turns to be the killer. But then you don't get any um, blood points and stuff like that to spend and upgrade your characters and stuff like that. Right, you know, okay. All five of you play, because if not, you just like basically cheat the game to get loads of stuff. But it's just, it's just so much fun. I actually won a game, and I didn't know what what I'd won. Oh right. As I was, I don't because like I said I don't do tutorials and stuff like that. I, I've played games for years, and then I realised, yeah, I probably should have done the tutorial and read the thing to tell you what to do. But but basically, everyone look when the monster gets you can't just kill you instantly he knocks you down and he picks you up over your shoulder and then he hooks you onto a hook through yeah. the, your back or something and basically if you get hooked three times you die so well, that's uh, okay yeah yeah and then the second time you have to press a quick time event to stop uh basically there's like these weird sort of like stranger things like um spiky monster things that want to stab you like big spider legs so you have to like press that but there's basically there's a lot of tactics involved you're like oh well, well if two of you do the generators the other person like keep the monster you know like out the way and stuff like that and basically once he chases you it's like oh it's on now and you're running away like dodging in between stuff and there's basically the only things you can really do is some places what there's like a wooden pallet sort of stuck in places and if you get the timing right you could just like push the button and he basically throws the pallet in front of him that gives you enough time you know only just enough time to escape right oh, okay. but then you just get yeah. really excited because i kept doing it wrong i was putting the pallet down but i was on the wrong side of the pallet uh -huh. instead of stopping him from getting me i just blocked myself off and then he got me anyway <laughs> i was just getting told funny. off and because I was trying to do the generators and couldn't do it, so she like, was like, Nick, stop doing the generators, just unhook me. I was like, all right then. Just, you know, just get told off. But then once everyone's dead apart from the last person, yeah. basically an uh, escape hatch opens somewhere on the map. I was like, which I, I didn't know that. And basically if you, if you escape into the hatch and you win, your team wins... But if the monster finds it and closes it, then you've basically got a timer at the top that sort of counts down. You know, well, it doesn't count down, but you know, it's like a bar that counts down with a, you know, like an like energy bar at the top. And if it gets all the way down, then basically he wins because he kills you. Right, okay. And stuff like that. So it's interesting. But like one time I was like, I was playing, and they're like, oh, well, it's down to you then, Nick. I was like, well, I've only played for, like, half an hour. And then I was like, what's this little hatch thing? And I just jumped in it, and then everyone just started screaming and cheering because we <laughs> That's like, pretty awesome. <laughs> so I didn't know. I just jumped in a hole. That's all I did. But but these games, I mean, the graphics are okay. The gameplay is okay. You know, there's a lot of tactics involved for, like, the really good players and stuff like that. Plus, you have to upgrade stuff because I bought, obviously, Jill, Valentine, and Leon. Yeah, and I was told, "Oh, you're not allowed to use that because I've got to use another character 
level her up to get her perks because it's kind of like Call of Duty but each character has different types of perks depending on how you want to play so like another perk will or could make it so, so you can heal them faster or you yeah. sprint a little bit after and things like that so I've got to play as this other character to get to level 50 so I get the perk I need but then I can use that on any character right oh, okay. so it means if you max out that character you ma you get all the perks and then you can use them for everyone right oh, that's pretty good <laughs> The monster gets perks as well. Ah. So it's just fun, you know, playing in voice chat. You know, like all these games are more fun when you're playing with people. I mean, yeah, yeah, they are. If you, yeah. Play, mm. if you play really crap games, if you're playing with your mates and having a laugh, that's 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 where the fun is. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, cool. So I've been playing yeah, that a lot last week. Oh, yeah, it looks good. Someone I would love to check there's out, actually. So many different. Like, yeah. So there's, there's probably about 12 or more different sort of like theme content packs for that game with like different mythical monsters or still monsters i think there's a halloween one and a stranger things and yeah, the, japanese the, mythology emmy gorgon or whatever it's called that silent thing. hill yeah the silent hill is there the, 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 and um nemesis but they, they announced a trailer as well which is why i looked on wesker's coming to it as well oh nice with, um, rebecca chambers and ada one Oh, nice. Obviously, That's pretty cool. You know, if it's got Resident Evil in it, I'm going to play it. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're like. Fanboy. Ultimate fanboy. You can play anything with Final Fantasy in it. Not everything. Those things. Uh, I made that whole PS2 game with Vincent in it. What's that one I didn't play? Is it Dissidia? I will, won't play that. That fighting one? I got, I got shit. Yeah, no, yeah, that. That, it... I'm yeah, it's a kind of fighting style in a fighting game. I'm mm, not a fan of mm, mm. not enough hand to hand. Them, those games, but there's nothing from what I could see. There's no story to it at all. No, I did. Um, just talking about Final Fantasy though. Um, I might as well just talk about it very quickly now. I um, I've put a emulator, well, retro arch onto both my Xboxes now. So my Series X and my Series S. And it works really well. So you can put RetroArch on there now. Uh, if you know where to go, the instructions are in our Discord group. So I've been playing some retro games on there. Um, PS1, PS2, Dreamcast, um, Mega Drive and Super Nintendo and arcade games as well. Um, and one of them that, that I was playing on there is, is a PS1 game called Ergex, which is a Final Fantasy fighting game. Ergoys, yeah. Ergo, which is absolutely dog shit, but... I, I actually quite liked it. At the time. I, I remember owning that on the PS1 um, back in the day, and then I didn't really like it then, and then I sold it, and I wish I kept it, because it's actually worth quite a bit of money now, but um, I thought I'd just download the ROM for that and give it a go, and I yeah, I was just like, mm, no. But... Nice to relive some of those beautiful memories. <laughs> so. so how does that work, putting that retro arc on your Xbox? Is it like an app on your Xbox, or does it like flash the whole system? No, 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 no. It? So basically, it's like, you, you know, like you download your other apps onto your Xbox, like Netflix and okay. Disney and all that bullshit. It's basically just an app like that. It's, called, it's RetroArch, but you can't download it. You can't search for it on the store, so that you go to a web link using the Edge browser on your Xbox, and then it just downloads it, like kind of through the Microsoft Store. And then once it's on your Xbox, it's there, and then it takes about five minutes to set it up. But but you have to have the ROMs on a memory stick, and then it reads them off the memory stick, and you play them through that. But yeah, that's it's so bad. easy to do, man. Yeah, that's. So I mean, I've, I hacked my. PS1 Mini or PS, you know, the PS1 Mini console yeah. with that on there. Yeah. And that's the same sort of thing, really. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for me, it's more of uh, just getting it to work and seeing what it's like because I've got, or, you know, I've got an emulator on my PC um, with thousands of games sitting on there anyway, but. Whenever things like this come out on consoles, I just want to try it out and see how good it works because in my mind, I'm like, well, if I can get this to work, then I can just play it on the telly downstairs. And it works really well. Like the, even Because I've, I've done it on my Series S and my X and it run, and everything runs well on, on my Series S 
are like absolutely perfect, like everything I've tried so far. So I'm really impressed with it, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm yet to try Saturn games on it, but there is a Saturn emulator on there as well. Um, but yeah, they're so, getting a bit better. That's yeah. just been one of the hardest things to emulate it has been. It for years. Yeah. But. yeah, but Dreamcast, like I tried out like Cra Crazy Taxi... Uh, runs absolutely perfect and skies of arcadia and even like there's some of the um kind of mame roms i've got and they worked fine as well so um i mean if you don't have a pc and you want to play like retro games and stuff um it's well worth a go because obviously you can play all the playstation classics on there as well so uh it it's it's just really really cool if you know where to get the, the ps1 from. games work really well on that Oh yeah, they really do, hundred percent. So yeah, some of the like I said, the Saturn always been a bit iffy. Uh, maybe because I sort of used my PS One Classic and anything. I think I tried the PSP games. Some of those were a bit yeah. iffy as well, especially yeah. the faster ones like Burnout, you know, mm -hmm. driving games and stuff like that. But that might be because my PS One Classic's just not powerful enough. No, it probably. I mean, it probably. I mean, like the PSP games. I mean, I've got an emulator on my PC. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head now, but um, I tried Crisis Core on that, and that runs fine. But now I'm kind of like, well, there's no point in playing it because obviously the remaster remake slash remasters yeah. out this year anyway. So fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, I love emulation just because one, there's a lot of games that you just can't get anymore, and that's the only way that you're going to play those classic games. And number two is if if those games are available, you're going to be buying them off some money grabbing reseller on eBay for like two hundred pound plus a lot of these games. And if you just want to play the game, you know, so that's a lot of money. So, and that money isn't going to the developers and publishers anyway. So I don't see any problem with with just acquiring the ROMs online. Yeah, I mean, I still well, I pay someone to print mine off and. Yeah, because I'm that lazy, but yeah, you know, like that's what I do with some, I got some more Dreamcast games and Saturn games this week, and um, yeah, they were like eight pound each, and you know, just plug them in and they play. Like, I saw yeah, one of my Street Fighter three third strike, yeah, I thought, oh, I want that one, Ollie. and like the cheapest version on eBay is like 140 quid, and I'm like, that's insane, isn't it? Now, and then some other games I bought. Which you know, so even rare. Some of them are like, was it JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Oh yeah, yeah. Or that JoJo's Japanese fighting game. Yeah, oh, four hundred quid. Game. I'm like, no, I'm not. Pa I'm not paying it. I just, I just don't see the point. No, it's just not like I'm gonna. You know, I want to play it. I don't want to put it on a shelf and hope that it's going to be worth more money in years to come. I want to play it. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, all this retro game collecting has just got the regular gamers just just been priced out now you know so you know the only way that you're going to be able to play those games is through em emulation and uh as i say there's no i don't see any issue with that i'm no. just surprised so many of the big companies haven't bought out someone like retro arc or something and just like use that to make there because all these like you get digital foundry testing a lot of this like playstation the new the stream and one and stuff like that and they're saying the emulation on it is terrible really badly made and it's just like you know i just think a lot of these companies just don't want you to have the old stuff because they in fear it'll stop you buying the new stuff well uh... not realizing know. people like to flip and to be honest a lot of the older stuff is more pick up and play games. Yeah. They're not these long, epic, sort of forty plus hour types that we get now. Yeah, completely agree. And that's why arcade games will always be really good, just for that. You know, I've got twenty minutes or ten minutes or whatever. I'll just play a quick boss on this. Job done. I'm happy. You know. So, um, anyway. Darren, let's go on to you, mate, because... Uh... Well, I'll just get one out of the way, which yeah. is the same thing. Um, DNF Duel, again. Is it just pick up and play fighting How... Oh, yeah. Anything else you want to say on it? Uh, well, I've spoken about it for like the pretty much the last month since it came out, so sort of dipping yeah. out of it for a bit each week. 
Well, it's uh, nice to know you're still playing it and still enjoying it, though. It's a good presentation know. and everything. There was an update for it the other day. Uh, I haven't checked it out since then, I don't mm -hmm. think. Um, doesn't seem to be any new characters coming for it, even though I think there are a lot they could do, considering it's based on a class-based sort of like side-scrolling Korean sort of MMO kind of game. Yeah. Oh, nice, mate. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it still anyway. All good. Okay, well, I... Um... <sighs> I think I just want to get this out of the way, actually, <clears throat> as I uh, checked this out the other day. So, I've been playing, oh, well, there's a new game that just came out on mobile phone and um, PC, uh, Tower of Fantasy. So, Basically, it's been compared heavily to Genshin Impact, and I can see why. I'm actually someone that really enjoys Genshin Impact, thinks it's a beautiful game. Never finished it, though, because it's so freaking long. Um, but it's got a very beautiful art style. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of it. It's very similar to Zelda, if you've never played it. Uh, Breath of the Wild, where you can have an energy bar to climb walls, and you've got a glider and all that sort of stuff. Um, so this new game called Tower Fantasy has only just come out this week. I think it's been uh -huh. in beta for for a while, but it's actually just come out um, on PC, so I thought I'd download it. I only played it for a couple of hours, but um, I can see there are definitely similarities um, between the two games. But the biggest difference is, though, at the beginning of the game, there's a quite a good um, character creation there. Um, so I spent a little bit of time creating some characters. It has um, been changed since beta form. What, Tower of Fantasy. The, the character, yeah, the character creator on Tower of Fantasy has been altered since beta, I believe. Yeah, because okay. people have complained that they've uh, nerfed certain things and changed things okay. uh, that were there in previous versions of the game. Uh, well, okay. Like you say, it has been in beta before a few times. Hmm. But, it, I mean, it is very similar to Genshin Impact in the way that the art style is presented, even though I think the um, the art, the, the graphics, it does look more polished and clean on Genshin Impact. However, that nice anime style is still very good in Tower of Fantasy. Uh, but Tower of Fantasy is more of a futuristic type game. Um, obviously, it's an anime kind of world, but... Um, it's you know you've got like motorbikes i've seen trailers where you can have like motorbikes and you've got like jetpacks um yeah. and like to get around um you know whereas in genshin impact it's just um uh your glider thing like your little wing things uh but the other thing about tower fantasy as well is um this is like an mmo whereas Gen genshin impact is mainly well, all I've played is just a single-player experience. I think there is a multiplayer kind of MMO-ish option after you've done the main story, but that takes forever, whereas this, um, after you've done the initial beginning bit, it's you see other players running around, and and uh, someone's mic's making a noise. What was that mine? Is oh, it? No, it's gone. It's gone now. Yeah, um... Oh. So, um, so yeah, this is more of a kind of an MMO type game where you see other players running around and you can team up and things like that, which is quite cool. But, but what I like about this is that futuristic aspect, um, you know, with with the jetpacks and just the way the world is, is is set as well. I think they're both. I think they're both very good games in their own right. To be honest, they both have their 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 perks. Um, to be honest, but I've not really played enough of Tower Fantasy to make a really uh, you know, to make a solid judgment of, oh, yeah, this game's super amazing, blah, 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 blah. But my initial impressions are very um, positive on this, to be honest. I mean, you look at, like, when I'm looking at the world map, it looks absolutely massive. It looks very beautiful. Um, so I've not ventured too far into the world at all. Um, but as I say, my initial impressions of actually playing it are very good. Watching some review videos on it, it looks... It looks decent as well. Um, my only thing on it is, it's the same with Genshin Impact, is 
you know, is there going to come a point where I'm going to have to spend any money? Because this is a free-to-play game. It's kind of a gacha game like Genshin Impact where you can pay for, like, characters and upgrades and stuff like that, even though I never spent any money on Genshin Impact. Um, you know, how much of this, of Tower Fantasy, is, is decent where in the free-to-play um, and, and when it, or if will it hit a point where you feel like you need to spend money? Um, that's my only thing, but, you know, as I say, it's very beautiful, uh, you know, and it's, as I say, it's free to play, I can't believe this is also on your mobile phone as well, uh, I've not actually tried it on, on, on my phone, and, um, but I can imagine that's it looks decent That's where they make there. a majority of their money. I can imagine, yeah, because they look how much money you have, like, cross so you can play on your phone and then pick it up on yeah. console or something like yeah. that? Yeah, 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 it does. Mm. The same as Genshin Impact does between that, the PC um, and mobile phone. Is Genshin not on Xbox or is it on there now? No, it's not on Xbox. It's only on it's on PlayStation, PC and mobile phone. But with Genshin Impact, the mobile phone and PlayStation versions don't have a cross save. Oh, so it's so just the PC and the It's mobile. just between the PC and the mobile phone, yeah. So. I suppose that's to argue with if you bought um DLC or whatever on the phone mm. then went on to the PlayStation version and was downloading whatever that was on the PlayStation, they'd say, well, hang on, we didn't get a cut for that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, but, but I think what people are really liking about Tower of Fantasy compared to Genshin Impact, it, it has that MMO feel where in the map, you know, as an example, there's like the world bosses pop up and then, you know, you get like 20, 30, 40 plus people all congregating in one area like say with final fantasy or other games as well and all fight fighting the same bosses and it just gets you gets more of a community feel in that regard yeah so mm. it's definitely a game i'm going to continue playing uh because because it is you know one it's gorgeous and two i just i i i, I, I just think my initial impressions on it are really positive so i don't know when i'm going to get time to pay this to, to play this because one of the reasons I fell off Genshin Impact is just because I had too many games to play, and um, especially when you're subscribing to an MMO like like Final Fantasy, you want to be playing the game you're paying the monthly sub for over the game that's that you're not paying the monthly sub for. But mm. um, I think I think there might be room for both if I if I really do get into this because as I say though the world is just very intriguing to me at the moment and as I say I haven't seen a lot of it. So um yeah, if you've got PC man, then definitely check this out. I don't think it's super duper um needing the resources on the PC. I think, you know, a low end PC could play this. Obviously you can play it on your phone, but I don't think these sort of games are the greatest on your phone. I mean, I tried Genshin Impact on my phone and it worked okay, but as soon as I started playing it on, on my PC with a controller, I was just like, yeah, this is the way to play it, you know? So, yeah. I suppose they just optimise it to use as little power as possible so they can get it onto as many phones as possible. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it looks Even the good. budget and stuff games, because if it only ran on, like, best iPhone and, like, the thousand pound yeah, Samsungs, what, what's yeah. the point, really? Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, it's quite funny because like I played Tower Tower Fantasy for a few hours, and then I went straight straight into Gen Genshin Impact just just because I wanted to um, see a uh, the difference, and uh, they are so similar in the gameplay. It's unbelievable. Is it really, really Tower is. Tower of Fantasy also a um, Chinese developer. I think it might be, you know. Um, I need to double check that. Let me check. Someone like NetEase or something like that behind it. Hot Hot Hotter Studio is an indie company that resides in China. Yeah, so it is Chinese. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if you don't want the Chinese government taking your data, then probably not play it. <laughs> so. Yeah, there is that about it as well. I think the, um, I mean, that's an interesting point there you, that you raised on because obviously Game Against Impact is Chinese developer, publisher, mm -hmm. and same as this. And they seem to be slowly um, taking out, well, they, they seem to be pushing out a lot of games. 
at the moment. There was one yeah. that's in the news as well. Oh, it's not in my news. We'll talk about that in the news then, mate, if you um, want. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, the only info you have to give them is just an email. Is your email address, and then you make, and then you make an account. But um, yeah, probably worth rereading the terms and conditions because it's like with TikTok, right? They take all your fucking data, so just double check on that. But um, I mean, my initial impressions are it's you know it's a decent game, but um, yeah, it's definitely worth being wary, wary about the fact that it's Chinese, hundred percent. Cool. Um, that's all I want to say on that, mate. Did you want to mention that bit of news now, Darren, or do you want to wait to the news section? Oh, I can go for it now. It was just uh, basically the there's a game that a lot of people have been looking forward to since it was announced called Black Myth Wukong. Mm-hmm. And it had new trailers released for it this week. One was a eight minute sort of gameplay trailer and the other one was a six minute sort of cutscene. Oh. That they played through. Um it's a very impressive looking game. It's almost like a tent peg for Unreal Engine five. Wow. They it started off development on Unreal Engine four. But then oh, they wow. kind of They've apparently made it easier for people to transfer their games from Unreal 4 to Unreal 5. Oh, that's good. So rather than obviously having to scrap the game and work again, like from the start on a new engine, Yeah. they were able to sort of just transfer a load of it across into yeah. it. And it's when you see it, it is a very impressive game. It looks very Souls-like. I'm sorry, Obviously, it looks good, following but the legend of um, like monkey or monkey magic, as it was known. Yeah, it does look very impressive. Um, from from what I've seen, I'm just watching the new trailer at the moment because I haven't had time to watch it this week. And yeah, it just surprises me, man. Like there's there's all these games coming from China now. I mean, a lot, I, I do find it a little bit concerning as well, to be honest, um, because the, the well, games that they're not, that isn't going to ask you for, hopefully not be like, I'll give us your email address and that like, you know, just make games yeah. like, rather than there's yeah. a lot of live service as it were with the other ones. Mm. But it's just but like, it's, like it's all the games are population of people. Like, yeah. that's why their mobile phone gaming thing out there is ridiculous and why a lot of companies have adopted it because it can make them a lot of money through, like, less effort. Yeah. It's and just the... a shame those games will just disappear when the servers go off forever. Yeah, yeah. It is, man. But there's something to say, like, the Chinese games that have come out have been very high quality. Um, and I think some of that Western developers need to be a little bit wary of you know what i mean they've got a lot of good competition on their hands uh, yeah it looks awesome um who are we up to was it nick now back to me back to nick back to me yeah so after i finished with dead boy daylight the first time like i've been drinking with jack daniels so i thought oh i'll just keep streaming because i had a few of my american friends in chat who i hadn't seen for like spoken to for a while yeah. I thought, oh, I'll play something. So I played What Remains of Edith Finch again. Oh, good game, that. That's a great game. Because that got a Series X PS5 patch in the last few weeks. Oh, nice. Well, that was obviously free if you've got it, and it's on um, Game Pass as well. But if you've got it, like, you get the free upgrade. It's one of these, if you got it on PS Plus a few years ago, don't get the upgrade. Which is oh, right. weird, but you have to then buy it again or something. But they've been known for stuff like that. Any the PlayStation, they're a bit tight. But, but yeah, I played that. I mean, it's got a 4K 60 frames per second, and it is a lot smoother and faster. And basically between levels, you know, there was a lot of loading times before. This one, that's just like really cool. So you close the book and you're away straight away. It's like there's hardly any loading times at all. Also, somehow they've took it down from... I mean, because these games are never huge, but they've took it down from, like, 3.5 gig to 2.8 gig. Oh, wow, that's pretty So they've decent. knocked about six, 700 megabytes off, because I watched a Digital Foundry video of this, and they just said it's just nice to see that 
developers are working over the years on you know compression and things like that because i think this came yeah. out in say 2017 maybe yeah it sounds about right you know so it's just nice so i was playing this for a few hours because like i said i had to finish off my bottle of jack daniels you know Fair days. stuff like that just enjoying it and stuff like that because like i said it's just a lot of these walking simulators are crap because I think they did loads of them on PC after a while once they started getting popular. Some of the good ones, you know, like this, um, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, Firewatch and stuff like that, they're just really good games. Worth yeah, that play. quality, yeah. Yeah, like I said, really enjoyed that. And I mean, even the bit now, it's like, what's the bit where um, the baby in the bath and you're playing with all the ducks jumping yeah, up and down? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was awesome, that bit. Then you've realised what, what's actually happening or what happened. Yeah. The baby, and you're like, oh, no, not the baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good game. So that's on Game Pass. If anyone likes it, you know, give it a go. It's a good little game. It's not, it I don't think it's that game. long. I think maybe three, five hours tops, really. If yeah. you know, where, if you know yeah. what you're doing. I started off really well because I could remember. And then as I got further on, I forgot what I was doing. The, the Jack Daniels may have had something to do with it. Yeah, fair enough, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good little game. I like it. Cool. Uh, Darren? Other main one this week, I suppose, Phoenix Rising. I've been dipping in and out of again as well. Phoenix Rising? Which I believe Immortals Phoenix Rising, the yeah. Ubisoft game. Yep. The slight breath of the world. Yep. <laughs> <Can't talk. laughs> yeah. It's us coming to Game Pass next month as well. Yes, I was about to say, yeah, I see the announcement this week. It's coming to Game Pass at the end of the month, isn't it? You yeah. can pick this up for seven quid off Amazon now. They're practically giving it away. Yeah, I, I picked it up for like literally six pounds. So, like, you can't go wrong with that, no. regardless. Yeah, well, if... I mean. Uh, it's heading to Game Pass. I just wanted to mention, sorry, Dan, that um, there's been some yep. rumours flying around today that I've noticed on social media um, that Ubisoft Plus it may be coming to Game Pass in the very near future as well. So there'll be shitloads of games available. So that's just something to ponder over. But yeah, the fact that Immortals is coming to Game Pass is awesome as well, I think. Get some Chivos on that. Didn't that come out? I think everyone praised it, but I think it came out at a funny time, so it just didn't sell that well. I think it came out the same, around the same time as uh, the last Assassin's Creed game, to be honest. Yeah, I think it was like late or late November, early December, and there was just mm. loads of big open world games. I think it just got lost in the shuffle, didn't it? I think so. I think so too. Because I tried to play it and then I kind of gave up on it after a couple of hours because I had lo loads of other games to play. Oh. Anyway, Darren, what were you saying, IPs, man? Yeah. I know, I was saying about, like, I was playing Phoenix Rising. That I've pers persevered with some of the puzzle dungeons. I'm getting used to them a bit, although they are still kind of irritating at times. Mm hmm. But it's it's a fun enough world to uh, go around, and uh, I've actually like completed the first sort of I'd say fifth or so of the game. Okay, nice. Because you're basically given a task to go out and find like these gods that have disappeared. Ah. Uh, and how, you do how quests does the... once you find them to bring them back. And I will say, when they actually come back, it looks pretty cool. Like I do like the sort of like the aesthetic they went for. Yeah, I like the humour in the them. game. I think that's pretty good, from from what I remember. It is sort of like amusingly, uh, sort of like a fun way of telling sort of pretty terrible stories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of like the Greek mythology and stuff, and mm. what went on with the gods, because they weren't really nice people. Yeah. In fact, there's <laughs> it's only really like certain religions where the gods are actually sort of benevolent. Most of the other sort of like things, they were all pretty terrible uh -huh. people. Cool man, I'm yeah, glad no you're doubt more that. people will be checking it out when when it hits Game Pass. And yeah, I can't wait to hear everyone say, oh, I can't wait for to hear more people say, "Oh, it's just like Zelda." <laughs> 
Because that's like, it is such a copy and paste, really. Especially with the dungeons. It just makes me laugh. Uh, well, like that short in Zelda as well, then. Um, so, like, some of them were short. Long. So I was, yeah, from what I remember, it's been a few years now, but I don't remember them being really that that long, to be honest. But some of the puzzles were quite tough, but yeah. Okay, is it my go again? Back to me, back to me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Okay, so I did actually complete a game this week. Go me, go me. Road 96, I absolutely completed it to completion, which was awesome. Um, it's really good, really, really good. Um, so I remember playing this on the PC a good few years ago, but never actually finished it. I only did a couple of playthroughs um, and actually didn't see it through to the end. So basically the gist is that there's... the the you're in this country, which is really awful, kind of a dictatorship, and the teenagers are disappearing. I'm not going to go more into that. So you play as teenagers will try and try and cross the border. And along your journey, you're hitchhiking across the country to get to the border. And you meet these wild and wacky characters along the way. And it all ties into the story. Um, so basically... You really like... So to see the end of the game can completely... Uh, there's a few different endings depending on certain actions that you make throughout the game. Characters can also die. Um, but you can, like, you you need... So basically, to see the end of the game, you need to successfully cross the border with six different teenagers. If you fail to cross the border, then you basically just... It just... You, you just... You know, it takes you back to the main menu and you pick another one and you start again. But basically, you need to get across the border with six teenagers. And I know it sounds quite repetitive, but it's just, it's really well done because you never go to the same location twice, but you run into the same, these same characters multiple times. And stuff kind of carries on with these characters from what's happened with the last teenager that you come come across them with and some of the characters you meet i would say all all of them you meet actually are really well done like the backstories are very well defined the actual characters themselves are very well done like with the voice acting and just how they are uh, some of them are quite comedic some of them are quite serious um and there's various stories going on with these characters and some of the uh and at the ending, oh man, I'm not, I'm not, obviously I'm not going to spoil it, but I was like, wow, this is just so well done. Um, yeah, so, but you can play through like the different, uh, I'll say levels, because you go to different, like you do like an area, then you hitchhike and it takes you to the next area, and then you see on the map how far you are from the border. And uh, there's there's lots of collectibles along the way. There's obviously there's there's the different characters you meet as well, um, and it just plays just really really well. Like there's a lot of dialogue options. And there's a lot of collectibles, um, and funnily enough, it is actually quite easy for you your character not to make it to even to the border by either dying or getting arrested. Um, but when you get to the border. Uh, at, at the end of a playthrough there's multiple ways of getting across the border so you can hide in the back of a truck um, you can climb a mountain you can um, what was the other one um, climb the wall with some other people um, and there's a few other various different ways as well and you can either pass or fail these ways of getting across the border as well um, it's got a really nice art style to it, uh, which I really like. It's kind of like car cartoony, but it's really nice. But I just really enjoyed the game because cause it has so many elements to it. It has like puzzle elements uh, and the dialogue options and just the characters you meet. You just kind of, when you get, say, across the border or not, you kind of like want to do that next playthrough with the next teenager just to see... You know what's happening with all these weird and wacky characters that you've met along the way. You want to know what's going to happen next, 
Uh, and it's just such a well done game. And the other thing about it is the soundtrack is so good. So damn good. It's all original music that the um, dev team made. And it's just spot on. Like with It's spot on with the setting completely. It's so good. Um, and throughout the game as well, you can collect cassette tapes. Um, uh, which is all the soundtracks in the game, and you can just and if there's a radio, you can put the cassette tapes in a radio in the game and just play it, which, which is really really cool as well. So, yeah, it it, it it's good because you've got a little bit of money management there as well. You got to manage your energy. If you run out of energy, obviously you die. So you need to manage that. Like you can buy food, water, drinks. You can sleep, and that gets some of your energy back as well. So. It's a real true gem of a game, and it's on Game Pass. So if you've got Game Pass, this is definitely a game to check out. I I absolutely love this game. It is so damn good. So, ten out of ten from me. Fucking awesome. Uh, yes, Nick. Right now, on everybody's favourite game, Fortnite. I can't believe yeah, so that. Man, that's shocking. Everyone loves it. That's great. Basically, you've got a Dragon Ball Z update, like event this week, this week, last mm-hmm. week, but well, in the last few days. So I saw because I was sort of a bit burnt out on it. I thought, oh, I'm kind of bored. I might play it later. And then I saw that. I was like, yeah, I'm back on. I've got to go on. And obviously, I was playing with people in my Twitch chat last night. We were playing for probably three and a bit, four hours. Just playing. And it's, it's just such a laugh. I mean, they've added um, four. Dragon Ball characters, basically Goku, Vegeta, Lord Beerus, and Bulma. And unfortunately, especially the internet is mad. It's not like sexy, slutty Bulma from early Dragon Ball. You know, in like a bunny rabbit costume. It's like the newer one, just like in a. I've like no lab idea, mate. And stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, basically, they. I've know, never watched it, so I wouldn't know. Well, that's because you're not cool like the rest of us. You see, I think but... it's because I think the term is I'm not a weeb. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything, to be honest. It's no, a nonsense no. sign that has uh, no actual I mean, as far as, at all. I mean, as far as just more characters, you know, like more quests to do as them, and there's basically there's some capsules that land on the map, and then you can get Nimbus, which is like a flying cloud. Then you pick up energy where you could do, you know, like the Kami Kami Ha kind of like Hadouken thing. Uh, where you can like hit people so I've just been running around trying to hit people with that that's what everybody seems to be doing but yeah it's really fun and then I think there's some other bits where you have got in the um... yeah where be like another area where you can go and stuff that's basically from the Dragon Ball that's not from Fortnite sort of area oh right but yeah it's just fun you know like these games it's just fun with people you know just have a laugh we, I think we've got three wins as well Anything weird is I bought Vegeta, and for some reason he just seems overly tall compared to everybody else. They're, they um, are slightly weird proportioned. Like I don't know if they're going to update characters. that sometimes, because they've all been mostly... So it's just funny watching like Dragon Ball characters like dance like Rick Astley and things like that, you know, and doing Gangnam Style, but... Plus also there's a fusion dance thing. I was like, yep, I've got to buy that. I don't know what it does, but... I don't know if it does actually fuse the characters together, like from the show, but no, I think it's, it's just the name, mate. It pro- yeah, it probably just does that, but it's 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 fun. It's a good game. Like I say, it's a community game, and it's easy to play that because because like I say, it's cross play between everything as well. So I know people who play on PS4, Xbox, on PC, and someone I know who play on Switch. So we've you know we've got. Every console, all playing, you know, or every platform, all playing together in the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's that's you know, with that, I think Dead. I don't know if Dead by Daylight is on. I don't know if that's on a Switch. It might be. Maybe that in because that's quite a long, not not as powerful one, but it's good. It's it's just more Fortnite. If if you like Fortnite and you like Dragon Ball, you'll probably like this. If you like Webby, and you don't, then you probably won't. It's shite. It's not so. You're there every Thursday playing Fortnite. I've seen you, mate. <laughs> Go on about your big points. You're hooked. You know you are. No. I'll put the thumbs down. I can see you on chat. See you on stream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. That's enough Fortnite for one week. Uh, Darren. 
Uh, I've played Fortnite as well. But oh, for yes. fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it, but I just thought I'd mention it just to be amusing. Good night, friends. Let's save the world with my mate. Uh, you play the proper, the original stuff, though, don't you? Yeah. He's old school, Because they have, like, seasons that run during it, which can get you materials to upgrade your characters and stuff higher than what they can normally go. Right, should we talk about something that isn't Fortnite then? Go for it. Okay, so uh, let's actually talk about a good game that I'm actually quite surprised. I've not, I don't know anyone else that's playing it, but it is fucking amazing. Arcade Paradise. Why is no one playing this game? I would like to know why no one is playing this. Because heard of it. never heard of it. Are you fucking joking me? I only talked about it... Oh, no, you obviously didn't listen to the podcast last week that you weren't on. Oh, no, I didn't, no. No, so... So, um, OK, Paradise, so it's been out a few weeks now. And since it's come out, I've been slightly addicted to it. So I've got it on Xbox. It's actually available on everything. Switch, PC, PlayStation and Xbox. Um, it's £16. Uh, I bought this up. I picked this up on launch day. Got it on the Xbox because I could use me Bing points. But but basically, it's an arcade kind of management sim, but it's first person, um, and it's got a really cool twist to it. So basically, the beginning of the game is you take over your dad's laundry um, shop. Yeah. So you're t- so you have tasks to do the laundry. So you put the clothes in the washer and then the dryer. Um, and all that boring shit. But in the back room, there's a couple of arcade machines. So you start off by opening up that back room to people that are washing their clothes to use the arcade machines. And then you find out quickly that the arcade in the back room is actually making a lot more money than than the laundrette. So as you make more money, you expand the back room by um, buying more arcade machines. You can actually make the room bigger. You can deck it out. Um, but the cool thing about this game as well is every arcade game in this game you can play. You just walk up to the arcade machine and you can play them. And the other cool thing about this is a lot of the games are two, two, three, four player, and you can play them multiplayer local. So me and Marcus have had some great fun playing some of the arcade games. Now they aren't obviously official real life arcade games. They are ones that the dev team have made themselves, but they are pretty much clones of popular (laughs) games that we know and love, like Dig Dug is a prime example. Mm. Um, You've got like Ice Hockey. Yeah, you've got like a racing game that's kind of reminds me of... um, Super Sprint or something? No, I was going to say Outrun, but not Outrun. Um, The motorbike game on the Mega Drive, but it was also in the arcade. Super Hang On. Super Hang On, that's it. Kind of like that, but as a spaceship, but it's like the graphics are Super Hang On and all that. And actually, a lot of the arcade games are really fun to play. Um, So I've been really having a lot of fun. But but the fact is, because there's so many elements to the game where um, you, you, you kind of like... So what I do is I kind of manage playing the arcade games between doing the loads of washing and drying because you have like an 80s style wristwatch so you know when a washing is done in the washing machine it'll beep at you and then if you do the washing and drying in a timely manner you get a, a big tip like a 20 dollar tip but if you get um but the longer you leave it the lower the rank you get and the lowest is a c rank and if you get a c rank you only get a five dollar tip so it depends how much you want that extra fifteen dollars, but I'm at a point where my arcade is making so much money that it doesn't really matter if I do any laundry at all. Uh, but what's really cool about it as well is you can buy obviously different arcade machines. It's even got like a dance dance re- revolution one. You know we have to match the arrows as they're going up the screen, and the music's quite good, like darts and stuff like that. There's also a jukebox. Uh, and it's got a really good soundtrack. It's like a not an early '90s soundtrack, and it has like some proper cool uh, like '90s rave music, um, and also like rock music and stuff like that. So there's loads of taste. But you can buy more music tracks for it. Um, so basically, in your staff room, there's a, like a an old like '90s computer, and it 
you go, you dial up on the internet, it goes, eh, eh, it does a, even the 90s dial, dial up sound. And then as you make money, you can buy more things. But um, you can't, but there's one store on there on, on, on the computer which doesn't take the dollars that you earn from your shop. Um, that only takes English pounds. And the only way you get pounds is is to do challenges. So every day, when you start a new day at the laundrette, you get challenges. And the challenges range from, um, you know, unload, make sure you do at least 10, what, you know, 10 loads of clothes today. Or you need to get a certain high score on one of the arcade machines. Um, or there's even one for not doing any laundry today. Uh, there's all these different ones, right? And but 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 a lot of them are to get you to play certain arcades, uh, which is really cool. So you do your challenges and you get your pounds and you can buy uh, the super cool things. Uh, so you can also get upgrades like a new pair of trainers, which makes you run around faster. Uh, you can get um, an assistant manager, and what the assistant manager does is empties out all the um, coin boxes for you instead of you having to do it man man manually. So, because if you don't have him, you literally, like, you know, you go around each arcade and you empty all the money out. And then you have to put the money in the safe. And then once the money's in the safe, it goes into your account on the computer. But you've also got to manage the shop as well and clean it up. So, you got to, like, pick up the rubbish off the floor, clean the toilet, uh, pick up all the chewing gum. But it turns into a little game, each one of these little chores. And the better you do, you actually get money as well. But it does it in a way, like... You know, it does like, you know, like in Doom when you get like a multi kill and it has that voice like multi kill. It does it for that, like excellent. You know, you get different rankings for how well you do. Like, um, if you aim your trash bag into the bin per perfect, it goes like totally tubular or excellent. You know what I mean? So it's it, like everything is gamified, which is really, really cool. And it's just. I I just find this game really addictive because I just love the fact of, you know, I can't, you know, I, I, I like to manage my time where, you know, I've got all the loads of washing in. I've got like three minutes to spare to like play some arcade games. I play the arcade games. I watch it go off. Right, I'm going to go and put them in the dryer. And then, I'm gonna, you know, and then I'll manage my time like that. And then it's managing your money and all that depending well, what arcade machine shall I buy? Where am I going to put it? Because you get a little blueprint as well. Uh, if you press the back button on your controller, and you can choose where to place your arcade machines. And and depending on where you place your arcade machines depends on how popular they are. So if you've got like a, a um, an arcade that's not very popular, but then you put it next to an arcade that is popular, it makes the unpopular one a bit more popular. Because obviously, like people who are waiting to play the popular one will probably play the unpopular one, right? And then the in the arcade management part on your PDA as well, you can set things like the difficulty of the machines and the pricing of the machines, and then you've got to try and manage it to that perfect level where you get the most money per hour from those machines. So it's actually quite a lot of depth to it as well, which is something that I really like about it. So, um, it, you know, I, 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 there's nothing else like this out there. Uh, and, I, and I just think that that that's just something that has a charm to me. It's just something completely different to anything I've ever played in my life. And it's just a true gem. And at that price as well, I think I think it's a winner, you know. So, yeah, 10 out of 10 for me. Boom. Yeah. Nick. Yeah, I was oh, back on the old stuff on a Dreamcast. Capcom versus SNK. Mm. Planks, I bought that because oh. I, I got my um obviously when I got my Dreamcast like modded and all that as region free. So yeah. I bought this like the Japanese version off eBay for like it was like eleven quid. Because like, you know, to get that version Compared to the English version or the American version, they're like 60, 70 quid. All oh, right. And, you know, it's a fighting game. Like, all, pretty much everything's in English anyway. Plus, I'm still not sure because there was a lot, like, with the Dreamcast, there was a lot of games that some had you know, PAL 60 hertz and some didn't. Right, okay. Obviously, if you got the Japanese version, they were, they were all PAL 60 hertz, weren't they? 
Mm. You know, which runs a bit faster. And yes, yeah. I was playing yeah. that, and I really like this. I, I don't know. I might like this better than Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Oh, wow. It's just, I, I don't know. There's something about the art style and just how they move. Yeah. So obviously you get the um uh, they feel get... nice and chunky in, in and yeah, they fit yeah, that's there. it's weird to explain. It's like when you try to explain how a shooting game is better than another shooting game because pretend guns just feel better. It's just yeah. weird. Some some games feel like you're playing as the character and everything just feels right and hits and connects. And sometimes you play games just like this character isn't doing anything, I'm telling I haven't got a clue. Mm. But the difference is you can um I mean, maybe you could do this in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I couldn't find it. Maybe there's a setting within a setting. But you can actually choose to have one, two, or three players. Oh, okay. Characters at the start and stuff. And then in between each bout as well, you can flick to which person you want to start first one. Oh, that's quite cool. Stuff is like that. Is it the bit... original or the second one? The original. I haven't got the second one yet. I will get the second one as well. I was going to say the the second one um, is like highly beloved. Uh, out between of the that, two, and... I think it is known to be the better one. Well, like I said, because this, even though it was the Japanese version, it was in it was on UK eBay. So I thought, well, I'll just get that now. I just one to see that you know my Dreamcast is region free. And to just you know just to play it because you know I just I don't know why well I've always liked fighting games back then I'm just getting into it a lot more now plus you yeah, know it's I just think a bit I've ha- got a copy of it on the original Xbox sorry I, I don't know if that one's on the Xbox I know number two I think I've got number two on the original Xbox yeah and SBC Chaos as well which is like the, yeah that's the, the one the I've got sorry yeah first. but then I've got um, Marvel vs Capcom two on the Xbox which is apparently a terrible port. Oh, okay. Uh, for whatever reason. Plus, I think they didn't like that, um, you know, the original Xbox weird D-pad thingy. Oh, yeah, that's, okay. that's not that's not good for fighting games. I mean, I mean, to be fair, the only controller that's really good for fighting games is probably the Saturn controller. And PS4, maybe. I think the PS4's probably got the best D-pad of all the PlayStations, probably if you're going to use a D-pad rather than... Because I don't... Do people really use analog sticks for fighting games? I do. Mm, depends. Sometimes, if the D-pad's a bit jism, then you uh, do end up using the stick just to make the rotations and stuff actually work and register. I think if that's designed, I mean, Soul Calibur I use with the analog stick and Dead or Alive. I think that's it. Everything else I use the D-pad with. Fair enough. I think it's everyone's just an individual. Good, but like at the start, you can... So at the start, you choose, like, Capcom or SNK, and then you can choose all the different fighters, which I can't understand. I don't know what, exactly what it's changing, because it sort of looks similar art style to me. Then it's weird, because it's not like you can choose... 